Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! As the Black Lives Matter movement swept the globe last year, the nation took pause to examine the deaths of Indigenous Australians in custody. Almost a year on, two First Nations people have died in custody in New South Wales within a week. A man in his 30s passed away at Long Bay Hospital last Tuesday, while a woman in her 50s died in her Silverwater prison cell three days later. Little was known about their deaths until a parliamentary hearing yesterday. This death was not proactively notified in any public communication. What? It was proactively notified in the context of the requirements uh, that we, in our policies, so Aboriginal Affairs was notified, Aboriginal Legal Service was notified through our Aboriginal Policy Unit, um, and of course the next of kin were notified through the normal channels that includes the New South Wales Police Force. When pressed, Corrective Services Commissioner Peter Severin said there was no policy to proactively inform the public of a death in custody. I would suggest that it is not appropriate for us mm -hmm. to simply advise the public in the absence of any detail that we can provide and uh, cause a lot of anger, a lot of angst and a lot of grief um, that already, no doubt, exists uh, by uh, adding uh, to that with a non-specific, simple message that somebody has passed away. I just cannot believe that that's an explanation that they've given. Considering that we you know we had um, such um, support from community last year with the Black Lives Matters campaign um, and highlighting um, the need for the public to be made aware about the Aboriginal deaths and custody that are occurring in this country. A group gathered at Parliament. First Nations people have been fighting for decades to stop their people dying in custody. In 1987, outrage over the deaths of several Aboriginal men prompted Bob Hawke to announce a royal commission. Any inquiry which did not have the status of a royal commission would be unacceptable. The inquiry made 339 recommendations for change, most of which were ignored. We still have not yet seen any uh, commitment of them being fully implemented. and. We are still seeing a high number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people being incarcerated and a high level of Aboriginal deaths in custody still occurring. A key recommendation of the inquiry was for all Indigenous deaths in custody to be monitored. They are reported annually, but experts say there needs to be consistent real-time reporting. It's really important that it's reported in real time because there needs to be public scrutiny and oversight over closed, what happens behind closed doors. In a statement, a spokeswoman for Corrective Services New South Wales said all deaths in custody were subject to rigorous public inquiry and to suggest otherwise is false and misleading. A New South Wales parliamentary inquiry into Indigenous imprisonment will hand down its findings next month. That will be 30 years after the Royal Commission handed down its report. Since then, more than 400 Indigenous people have died in custody. It's a blight um, on this country's history. We're continually losing people. What is it going to take? You know, how much more do we have to keep calling out this government? Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.